The following program is sponsored by PokerStars.com. This week on The Big Game. I'm all in. Tony G busted the brat with a controversial play. Look, the people at home know I haven't looked. If you haven't looked, I guess I'll just move in. All right, you're close. Oh, you lied. Of course I lied. It's poker, Phil. Can you believe he lied about his hand? And then, Joe Hashem ran into quads not once. I called you. You called? Really? But twice. I'm only Call. Four jacks, I guess. Wow. Four of a kind again. Am I the king of the quads today or And as the season winds down, just the ex-cop, Ken Rankowski, stands between the leading loose cannon, Massimiliano Martinez, and the ultimate prize. He needs to win like another 100,000. For the passport, yeah. yeah. You better get at it. <laughs> you better get going. Will Ken risk his profit and try to apprehend the title? Find out tonight on The Big Game. Don't listen to I these guys. The they all want to so bust you. And welcome to the big game, the most exclusive game in town. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Scott Huff, and tonight there's a staggering $1.2 million in play as finals week continues and we look to crown a new loose cannon champion. Speaking of crowns, the 05 champ has had quads made against him twice, so Joe Hashem's been renamed the king of quads. Heavy is the crown, down 52,000. Argentinian pro Jose Nacho Barbero is an international jet setter who goes clubbing around the world. He's on the list tonight, plus 9,200. Tony G gets involved in more pots than Gordon Ramsay. He busted the poker brat. Now he's up almost 120K. Knit poker, excuse me, kid poker is here. The newer, rockier, button foldier Daniel Negrano is down 11K. And the loose cannon is 51-year-old retired cop Ken Rankowski. The Canadian is up over 68,000 after flopping quads earlier in the session. We'll see if he's content walking the profit beat or if he'll take the more dangerous assignment of chasing down that loose cannon title. And our final player is Hollywood star and poker player Jennifer Tilly. After losing half her stack early, Tilly has been steadily climbing back to even. She's with Amanda Leatherman. Jennifer, tell me how much fun you're having here on the big game. I'm having a ball. And you know, I always wanted to play the big game, except for it's actually a little too big for me. But then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to dive in and go and have a good time. And uh, it's just great. I was having fun when I was losing. I'm having more fun now that I'm on my way to getting unstuck. Well, last night you hit quads mm -hmm. on Joe Hashem. Have you ever had quads on TV before? No, I actually don't think I am, and I'm very surprised I didn't somehow manage to misplay them. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying that, but I think you're hanging with them all right. Yeah, although Joe did say if I'd gone all in on the river, he would have called, so I don't know. I just didn't want to blow him out of the water. I was like, well, I have quads, I have quads. I thought, if I check to him, will he bet, and then I can raise? I thought, well, he's really smart. He might just check behind me, so that was fun, though. Good luck. I hope you get him again. All right, thanks a lot. Here are the rules for the loose cannon. Each cannon is staked $100,000 to play. He keeps all profits above the initial 100K. And at season's end, the loose cannon who's won the most money earns a North American Poker Tour passport worth $50,000. Ken's got 60 hands left to overtake the leader, Massimiliano Martinez. Max yeah. checked out with 163K in profit. Even though Ken trails, he's just one double up away. This is what hell must be like. Night after night after night of playing poker. Sounds like heaven. <laughs> I've been living in a hell then. Kind of hellish having Tony G at your table. <laughs> Actual start on our loose cannon. Looks down, sees the 8 7 of spades. All right, Ken, come and get it. It's going to happen. Ah. <laughs> cannon folds, couple nines for Daniel. You want to start straddling? Raises. Cool. You guys want to do, a, you want to do a round of straddles? No straddles, no straddles. No straddles, okay. Tilly calls. No round. Two rounds. Tony G with 7 5 suited, calls. Nacho out. <coughs> Deuces for Hashem. Even if I want to fold, I can't fold. Joe's right. He's getting pretty juicy odds. Better than 5-1. to one. Makes the call. We'll have four-way action on the first hand of the night. Flop. 4-4-9. Four, four, full house for Daniel. You're going to need a bigger boat. Check. Hashem checks. Let's see if Daniel tries to set the hook. Check. Checks. Check. He does so far. Till he passes. Tony G will give everyone a free card. Could no one bet? Harumph. <laughs> Turn. Ten of diamonds. Check. 
Joe checks. That 10 would sometimes be a great card for Daniel, but no one picked up diamonds, and only Jennifer turned a gut shot draw. Daniel trying to not look too scary. Just 4,000. Tilly out. Tony G folds. Does Hashem want to be a hero? Joe <laughs> folds. Put Daniel in quad fours. I feel like doing a Phil Hung, you annoyed. <laughs> wow, I don't even want that pot. <laughs> Throw it back. Seriously. Pick a baby pot. If I can't uh, hook anyone on that one, five mm. people in. I nearly peeled one more off. Did you flop quads or, sit, or full of nines? Full of nines. That sucked. <laughs> That's so way more annoying than taking a bad beat, don't you think? I think so. Oh, yeah. painful. That hurts. I'll take the boat. It hurts. As Daniel licks his wounds, let's take a look at the rules of the big game. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit, then no limit after the flop. Blinds are two and four with a $100 ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least 100K, but can rebuy for up to 500,000. This year, cannons cannot return, so Ken, the former cop, is literally two days from retirement, so we better be careful. If, if I was hoping you had Ace Force suited, and then we are going to get a big check raise in and fire and show some hot. Eights for Daniel. Top set full. <laughs> I'm going to show some heart. So you three, quads, top set quads, huh? Oh, full house I flopped, actually. Daniel's raised. Pot. What's the pot? Tilly with ace jack. Three nines, yeah. Raises to 4,800, Tony G out. Nacho, a couple of nines. Nacho's in position, and Daniel just showed us how easy it is to flop a boat with two nines. <laughs> Nacho calls. Hash him out. Ken out. Total's 48. 48. Action back on Daniel. Daniel's in rough shape, but no chance he folds a pair. It's not that hard to flop sets two hands in a row. <laughs> Daniel makes the call. And as you can see, Daniel's a pretty big dog. Well, I'm going to check because I can't think of a flop I'd bet here. I check. Check, check. check, check? Yeah. Look at that. Have you ever seen that before? Jennifer, three bet, then check dark. Hmm. Flop, seven, five, four. No overcards, but potentially dangerous with all kinds of draws. Can't remember the last time I've seen that. The double pre-flop check to the I've caller. Never seen it. I've never seen it. Nacho though. checks it around. Maybe shouldn't have given a free card there. Turn, queen of hearts. Well, it looks like Daniel's checked long enough. Fires 9K. Jennifer's hand still in last place. And is now out. It might be pretty easy for Nacho to make Daniel for that queen. Apparently he has it. Makes the call. Daniel looking for a 6 or an 8 to improve. River. It's a 10. Another potential scare card for both players. I think another bet from Daniel might be able to get Nacho to fold. Nope, checks. Two eights? Two nines. Oh, pain. Pain. <laughs> Good hand. Thanks. And Nacho's nines will take uh, it. I was going to check Razy on the flop, too. Good check. Yeah, that's. I mean, if I bet the flop, my, my hand is kind of like face Dead. up. Yep. It's either like I have like a mid pair or like sixes. Through 92 hands, Nacho Barbero's big game premiere has been a success. So far, the Argentinian has brought a solid style for this six max cash game. He's staying active with a VPIP of 38%, PFR of 23%, and following up post-flop with a 1.9 aggro factor. Couple these stats with his salt and pepper quaff and his suave accent, and you get why this guy's a winner. Straddle action. I think it's important when you put your straddle down to say straddle really loud and several times. Then people get the impression you straddle more than you actually do. Because they remember, boy, I her annoying voice saying straddle all the time. So you get more, <laughs> more value out of that. Tens for Tony. Because I'm not that kind of girl that like goes all in when someone raises my straddle. Tony knows that about no. me. No. Tony's raised to 2,500. Barbero out. Asham folds on our cannon. King seven out. Daniel, Jack ten. And he will pitch it. Tight for Daniel, but he'd be out of position to Tony. Tilly with a suited one gapper. Jennifer seems to care not about position, and right after she said she wouldn't defend her straddle to death. Heads up flop between Tony and Tilly. Jack, ace four, bottom pair for Tilly. Tony's still best. Tony was the pre-flop aggressor. Tilly checks, and Tony checks. Might not like the two over cards. Turn, nine of diamonds. 
Jen may think she has the best hand since Tony checked the flop. I was actually thinking about, does it make sense if you bet, just check raise? She may, fires 3,000. Jen just called from the straddle, so it may be tough for Tony to give her credit for a huge hand here. Plus, it's Tony G. He makes the call. Tony may have been playing pot control on the flop so he could get to showdown more cheaply. To the river. Deuce of clubs, two pair for Tilly. Clubs just got there, but in general, what a fortuitous river. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Looks like Jen wants to take Tony to Value Village. Bets 5,000. This might be a tough spot for her to get called. Tony does a lot of betting with the worst hand, but not a ton of calling. Tony folds. Too good. Not bad by Tony either. Called when he was winning, folded when he was losing. Pretty impressive. Nice river for Tilly. She had 6,700 to her stack. Tilly on a rampage. So Jennifer Tilly continues her long road to recovery. Will tonight be the night she finally gets even? Stick around and find out when the big game continues. Welcome back to Las Vegas, home of the big game, as we check in on our final loose cannon of the season, Ken Rankowski. The ex-coppers got 56 hands left to collar another 96K and steal the passport from the leading loose cannon, Max. Ken is playing with his own money at this point, so we'll see if he's willing to risk it. I think it would be really good in the last episode if you, like, undo your tie and sort of roll up your sleeves and then rake your hands so, like you're coming and done. And so put, people, let's put water yeah, over sweat here. Stains. <laughs> <laughs> Spray and, the water and we'll on put the like face, a, yeah. a, it's like a beer in front of you, like you, you're becoming unraveled. Oh, yeah. Like the and pressure is getting more facial like just, hair, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon, <laughs> and in real life. <laughs> Barbero with ace nine raises to fourteen hundred. <laughs> Asham folds. Well, that's why Ken, I mean, queen eight. Not coming undone. Ken's one of those by the book cops, I guess. Negrano folds. Tilly in the small blind lets it go. Queen Jack for Tony G. Guess what, Nacho? You're getting some action. Tony calls. Okay. Nacho's ace high, the slight favorite right now. Flop. Ace, nine, seven. Top two for Nacho. Tony's got a flush draw, the second nut flush draw. Checks. Nacho's got top two, no heart, however, in his hand. He's got plenty in his chest, I assume. He's Latin. Bet's 2,500. 65. Lots of ideas. Tony raises to 6,500. Semi-bluff raise. Can't really fold this to Tony, especially since you're not likely to be drawing dead. And Tony's quite likely to do exactly what he's doing. Semi-bluff, one heart. Nacho calls. See, I told you he's got heart. <laughs> Turn, king of hearts. Tony gets there. Not only does Tony make his flush, but since it was the king of hearts, he knows it's now the nut flush. Tony checks. Probably best for Nacho to just check behind and maybe improve. And he does. To the river. Three of hearts, now five hearts on board. Tony G with the quick check. Technically, they both have a flush, but Tony's got the nut flush and Nacho's playing the board, so Tony's really hoping he can get a check raise in here. Nacho bites, bets 9,000. There's a reason you don't put nuts on nachos, or nacho on the nuts. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, you're looking like that, you haven't got it. Tony bets 35-5. Tony's made a huge raise to make it look bluffy and confusing. It's a spot where Tony's trying to make it look like he's bluffing Nacho off a chop. Nacho double checking. Still no heart. Why did not check? I don't know. He wanted to test me out. See if I got the guts. Oh, sick. How lucky you got this hand. He did get a little lucky. Nacho folds. Uh, nice, son. What'd you say? Why did you bet? I was probably losing anyway. It's just... It didn't have much. What? It didn't have much there. You couldn't afford a call. I'm not calling. I didn't have any choice. I mean, I had to race with what I had. So Tony G continues his assault on the table. Through 95 hands, he's won 30% of the pots. And next in line behind the G is the Argentinian Barbero. He's won nearly a quarter of the pots, while the loose cannon Ken Rankowski has taken down just 6% of the 95 hands we played. But when one of your wins includes flopping quads and doubling up, 6% can still equal a nice payday. Action will start on the 2005 main event champ, Joe Hashem, ace king. Raises to 1,200. Arcana with queen six, out. Daniel Tentre throws in rags. <clears throat> Wow. Same hand for Tilly, but suited yeah, in hearts. This can be a three bet, but just calling's fine in position. And she does. 
Ace five for Tony G. I really had it. I can promise you. I believe you, Tony. I, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't <laughs> raise the river if I am. I mean, yeah. I mean, I had it. I couldn't. Run. He didn't have one heart for sure. He never had one heart. He either had two or none. <laughs> I flopped up two. So, like, that's pretty sick. Tony and Nacho in to the flop. Ace do six. The case ace on the flop. Just happened. What are you gonna do? And it hits three players. Tony G with the worst of it. Fires 2,000. Tony's donked, hoping to take it down right away. Not likely. Nacho out. Hashem just calls. Not everybody can have a nice. Oh, but they can. Until <laughs> oh he raises to 15,000. Good spot for a raise. It's a massive raise, an over raise, actually. Jen might think she can get action from Tony no matter what. <sighs> but she doesn't. Looks like Hashem's giving up, too. What was it? Yeah. All right, ace five. So where, where were you going? <laughs> well, had, what, what can I do? I mean, I wasn't going anywhere. Did you, you have, have an ace Hashem? She must have had a flash draw. She got Joe Hashem to fold the chop, so nice hand. Tilly had the hammer and the hot. I had the button. That too. They're that big. I must just could, couldn't be anything else. I mean, flash draw. I think this loose cannon concept is excellent because I've been watching poker on TV for quite some time and I've always thought, you know, if I could just be at that table with those guys, I think I could do okay. But, you know, who's got the money to do that? This concept has given amateurs like me the opportunity to do that, to see what we can really do with our game. And this could really jumpstart our career if we do well. Even though Ken's doing all right on the scoreboard, he hasn't really played up to the level of the table. So I'll just say, if you go broke, I wouldn't dip into the pension to stay in the game. <laughs> Action starts on Daniel Negreanu, ace queen. It's a raising hand, makes it 1200. Tilly, 7 4, out. Come on, Daniel, every hand? Yes, every hand. Jeez. Every hand till Saturday. Saturday, he gets his highlights touched up. <laughs> Tony G folds, fucking deuces is for Nacho. Calls. Spike call. Do it. Let's. Uh oh. Bring Spike it. Spike call. Oh. Hello. Got Kenny. Asham and Kenny call. Here we go. Got some of that Luke Cannon money. So Daniel's raise gets a lot of respect. Four-way action. Deuce five, deuce quads for Nacho. Joe Hashem steer clear. Check. Check. Hashem checks. Ken checks. Daniel continues for 3,000. Nacho has flopped. Hashem dead. Negranu dead. Rankowski dead. Niedermeyer and Dean Wormer dead. And Nacho just calls. Smooth call. I don't want to play with him anymore. First time Joe's avoided quads all week. <laughs> Poor guy, he folds and so does Ken. Couldn't have a pair of fives there, Ken? Just... No, no. Luckily. Turn. Ace of spades. A pair for Daniel. Rut row. Top pair. Not just thinking, please bet, please bet, please bet, please bet, please bet, please bet. But Daniel just checks. Daniel checks for a multitude of reasons. He could be beat. The only flop draw just got there. He may not feel he can get two streets of value if he does have the best hand. And by checking, he gives Nacho the chance to bluff at it, which he is not bluffing. <laughs> Bet's 9,200. Barbero. Well, we all know Daniel hates folding about as much as he hates food that had a face. Nacho might play any baby ace with a wheel draw the same way. Daniel makes the call. Nacho's got a live one here. Another ace would be very bad for Daniel. To the river, three of hearts. This is actually a good card for Daniel because it looks bad as any baby ace is now beating him. It might save him some money. Daniel checks. Nacho's got to figure out how strong he thinks Daniel's hand is before he can figure out how much value to go for. Going for the great chips, fires. Yeah, that card legitimately scares me. I, I thought I had the nuts on the turn, to be honest. I think I had the nuts on the turn, but that one, would you bet aces and threes with that? Let me see. How much did you bet? 20,000 too. Is he gonna do the commentary thing? Cool. I'm gonna split for a hot minute. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking like sixes or sevens. Sixes or sevens are, are good for me. I had you on ace four unfortunately, on the turn. So if you had ace four, then you just made a straight. Huh. Can only beat him turning a pair into a bluff. It's the only hand. 
But Nacho Barbero is very capable. God, I don't like that river. Such a good river for you if you put me on jacks, right? You figure I have jacks, you have to bet that river card now. So many, I leveled myself with the pause and the turn. You know what I mean? On the turn, I studied, studied, and like sort of changed my range in his eyes, which forces me to go like that. Daniel calls. I had the nuts. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> quads? <laughs> quads again, and Hashim wasn't in the explain. hand. More quads, huh? Oi. I was gonna say that's what I think fives, wow. fives or something. Like Deuces. I all right, like, there's no way you're gonna play. No, I mean, yeah, that all makes sense too. But I was like, yeah. yeah. I should always put people on quads because right. I've never I've seen run so many quads. quads in my life. Quads again, huh? Hard to put nice. them on quads. I still think I have to call in a weird way. Nacho yeah. drags a pot worth over 70k. It's tough to fall though. Yeah, I don't think I'm. The river card almost cost you money. No, I mean the the way the line you took. It's tough to fall. Yeah. That's right, Nacho. Smooth him over. Smooth him over like melted cheese. <laughs> Just the latest in a string of successes for the Argentinian phenom. My name is Jose Nacho Arbero, and I'm on the big game. Nacho! Nacho. 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 Barbero. Barbero. Oh, Barbero. 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 The name Nacho actually comes from the abbreviation of Ignacio, which is like Italian name. So whenever like the immigration arrived to Argentina, everybody was telling Ignacio, Ignacio, Ignacio. So it degenerated to Nacho. So every Ignacio in Argentina, they call him Nacho. So that's why they call me Nacho. Last year, I won five live events. That it was fantastic for me. When you had such a successful year, like people is expecting you, you to like go ahead and do the same. It gives you a little extra pressure, but I'm pretty confident with my game. I don't go in the middle, I don't finish in the middle of the pack. I want to win, only win. Nacho Barbero is one of the young, up and coming, like superstars in the tournament scene. I mean, he's a deep thinker, he's really wild and crazy, and he's fun to play with. He's a, he's a great all around guy too. I'm here to win. My first goal is to play good, but after that, obviously, I want to win. And I want to prove that, I mean, I'm able to play with the biggest star in the game. Nacho has had the majority of his success in the Latin American Poker Tour, which, if it's anything like Telemundo, count me in. I was just saying in my head, let's flip a set once in the show. <laughs> then I see deuce, deuce, I'm like, oh, this is actually better. The only thing better than flopping quads is flopping quads against Daniel and then letting him turn top pair. Daniel couldn't even beat the hand he put Nacho on and called anyways. We might have to rename quad deuces the Nacho Supreme. <laughs> Action on Dilly with Ace Trey, folds. Tony G, 9-8 offsuit. Tony hasn't put money in the pot for a solid two minutes. Time she's up, raises to 1,500. Ace King for Barbero. Certainly can three bet this with Tony's range. Just calls, hash him out. Ken folds. Daniel with ace seven. He'll let it go. Nachos ahead with ace high. Tony does have two live cards. Heads up to the flop. 10 tray four rainbow. Both miss. Tony first to speak. I check. And says check. Nachos got the best hand with ace king high. Checks it to the turn. Jack of spades. I go to bed. Tony bets 3,500 with his up and down straight draw. Jose Nacho Barbero with a gut shot now. Jose Barbero. Calls. Nacho Barberos. All right, Jen. <laughs> Five hearts on the river. Tony misses. Nacho still best. Tony checks. Probably good, but I'm, I check. And Nacho tables the winner. That's good. I didn't even like it. Boss man, I'm adding 100. You got that, boss man? Got it. So Daniel like adds a bullet while Nacho adds even more toppings to his chips. We're coming right back. I didn't make it. Got a king queen? 9 8. Welcome back to the big game. Well, one of the questions we had coming into the night was how our loose cannon, Ken Rankowski, was going to play the rest of the week after doubling up on hand 58. If we look at Ken's VPIP for the first 58 hands compared to how he's played since the double up, it's clear he's going into lockdown mode. Ken started with a VPIP of 16% and has dialed back his starting range to include just 9% of his holdings, having played just four of the last 46 hands each time while in the blinds. How you doing there, Ken? 
<laughs> I'm okay. You right? I'm still alive, yeah. He's straddling for 30. <laughs> I'm your agent, don't worry, it's fine, it's fine. No one will call, don't worry, it's good. <laughs> it's all laughs, but Ken's up more than a year's salary right now, so while it's easy to be critical of his tight play, this is life-changing money to a lot of folks. Apparently not to Jen, she's straddled, so the action's on Tony. Folds. Ken, this is a trick that Phil does. He's kind of a nit. He doesn't play a lot of hands, but he talks a lot. So it looks like he's always involved. Yeah, that's funny. You're, that's so true. <laughs> sort of like when you're straddling. Yeah. He's been working that for 10 years. Yeah. Phil Locke behind the hoodie. Hashem raises. 5-6 for the cannon. Out. Daniel. Queen-8. Suited. Daniel's stuck, and he just reloaded, so expect his VPIP to go up a few thousand percent. What's he doing here? Three bets to 8K. That must be a raise. Yup. Or a misclick. <laughs> Till he folds. He Tell me, Ed, I'm not playing with this guy anymore. Why? <laughs> I had it, I had it, I had it. He had an eight. I'll be back. Joe, you don't want to see the other one? No. No, I believe you. I was going to show you. I had a deuce, that was my high count. Okay, never mind. Well, that, that's a good hand. That's Nacho. It's by Joe. The Nacho Supreme. Joe will still be dealt in, but his cards will be mocked. Hurry up, Joe. You can still uh, you can still make it. <laughs> Nachos straddle. Uh, Joey. Oh, oh. And Hashem's hand is dead. Action on the loose cannon. Ken Rankowski. Seven deuce. Not going to get the passport with those cards. Mucks it. Well, I'm in. Oh, we know. Daniel raises to 1,600. Eight six suited for Jen. Take it. Three bets to 3,500. 35. I like the thought of three betting Daniel's button pretty wide, but that's not going to be enough to get him the full preflop. Tony G's out and Nacho. It's a little too small, Jen. Phil Locke is going to be upset with you after that raise size because it's too small. Because like a real, you know, sizable one puts me to a decision. Now I don't really have one. Joe, we looked. You had aces. You know what I'm saying, right? You yeah, I understand. <laughs> okay. You probably misclicked. Last you time I took a base from you, I lost the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. See, if you would have raised like a lot more, right. this hand probably doesn't get called. Uh, now you're out of position. Cover oh, spot. I am out of position. See, that's the uh, thing. This is a new thing I'm dabbling with, What's the min raise. The min re-raise out of position? Yeah, yeah. The min re-raise out of position. That's like a... It's uh, insanity. Daniel's called. We'll see a flop. 8, 10, 4. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to do the dunk bet. That's not a donk bet, because you were the preflop raiser. Oh, okay, it's not a donk bet. It's a continuation bet. A continuation bet. Jennifer did flop the best hand. Bet's 5,000 with middle pair. And okay, now you're in a tough spot, because there's a lot of funky stuff that could happen over there. I know, that's a very textured board. Yeah, a lot of bad cards could come off, and then I can just bluff raise the turn or something stupid like that. You could. Turn a pair into a bluff. I'm really good at that. It's one of my big things Bill Reynolds taught me. Flop a pair, you think they got a bigger one, just raise bluff them on the turn. Welcome to the view. Daniel makes the call. <laughs> Daniel's got a bad ace high. I assume this is a float with an intention of trying to swipe it later. Turn five of hearts. Tilly and Daniel now both with gut shots. I'm going to check. Tilly checks. Daniel's picked up wheel out, so my guess is this would be a good time to follow through on that float. Bet 9,000. That's some great follow through. Bet's 9,000. He's testing Jennifer's metal. She rises to the challenge, makes the call. Good call from Jen. We'll see a river. Looks like she knows Daniel might be up to no good. Seven of spades till he hits her straight. Jennifer just backed herself into a straight that I barely noticed. <laughs> well, she needed to make sure. Looks like she's gonna lead at this now. 20. Fires 20,000. Well, I'm fairly certain Daniel knows he doesn't have the best hand, so it's pretty unlikely that he'll call. Even for Daniel, a call would be ridiculous. So it looks like there might be a little devil inside him trying to tell him to raise and take Jennifer off her hand. I don't know that Jennifer can be taken off her hand. Look at this, Daniel is all in. They probably have the same hand. Not quite, but if she follows her read, she will win. Oh, so sick. Jennifer has about 80K behind. I think if it were more like 50, it'd be a snap call. You have nine jack, right? Would that be the same hand as you have? Because if you did have that and you didn't call by now, it'd be a little bizarre. 
eight, nine, jack, eight, nine, ten, jack. Oh, God. <sighs> These decisions are even tougher on TV. All kinds of self-leveling going on. Why would you go all in? Good question. Can I call a friend? <laughs> the only person you may call is Daniel. What do you have, Daniel? What do I have? Yeah. I have a straight. Is that what you have? I have a straight. I thought you is said we had the same hand. Is it a chop? Because that's mm. what I have. Oh, you have a six? Can you raise me with a six out of position? No. That's crazy talk. Then how do you have a straight? This is going to look so bad on TV when I fold. <laughs> No, we all knew that we only had a six. That was a given. Yeah, you didn't know when you shipped it. Because we all know. Ken didn't know. Ken's not even here anymore. He's Ken's checked out. Until he folds. Don't you dare not show her. Yeah, I don't want to see. Don't you dare not show her. I don't want to see. Give me my five back. She doesn't want to see. She asked not to see. She's not gonna want to see it on TV either. Jen, don't worry about those idiots. That's probably yeah. the sickest fold ever. What? Play the internet idiots? Yeah, play your hand. Yeah, they just don't cost me twenty thousand dollars. Those internet those guys. Those? The, the haters. Could have had a flush draw. Who? Yeah. How could I have a flush draw there? If I had a flush draw, it would have been jack nine of clubs, wouldn't it? Jennifer folds to satiate the internet kids, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Oh, don't blame the forums. That was all Daniel. Jennifer Tilly just got bluffed. Welcome back to the big game where we just saw Daniel Negreanu put max pressure on Jennifer Tilly, a move that's driven her to drink. Kid Poker takes us through his thinking in the hand as we go behind the poker face. Cocktails. Well, going into this hand, you know, I was mapping out the table. We got in the action up a little bit. Nacho comes in with a straddle here, and I'm on the button with ace deuce offsuit. So I'm in raised to 1600. Jennifer Tilly, she makes it 3,500, which is a very small re-raise. Everyone else folds, it's back to me, and I start talking to her about the raise size. Phil Locke is gonna be upset with you after that raise size, because it's too small. Jennifer is a watcher, she's a studier of the game. So my thinking is, in position, there's a lot of boards that I can bluff her with. I'm not calling with ace-deuce because I think it's good. I'm just calling because I've got position. The flop comes 10-8-4 with two clubs, and she bets 5,000 rather quickly. I know Jennifer Tilly is an aggressive player, so I'm thinking in my mind, she doesn't have to have anything. So I'm gonna make this call with the intention to bluff. The turn card's a five, and that gives me a little hope. I mean, now I can catch a three for a straight, uh, and she checks. So I'm thinking, okay, if she has ace high, or if she has some sort of like king queen type hand, she's just gonna fold. I decide to bet 9,000, and she calls pretty quickly, which gives me some concern. The river card comes a seven, which makes a four card straight on board. Any six makes a straight, and she bets 20,000. And I'm thinking to myself, this doesn't make any sense to me. She re-raised me before the flop out of position. She doesn't have a six. She wouldn't do that with a six in her hand. That's my thought process. As far as my hand goes, I can easily have a six. I can have absolutely anything. So she bets 20,000, and in my mind, I'm thinking, she doesn't want to go all in here. She's having fun, but there's a lot of pressure you can put on someone when you put them to the ultimate decision of everything. So I thought raising anything less than that didn't make sense if I was going to make this bluff. So I decided to go all in. And she starts thinking, and she goes, wow. You probably have the same hand. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she has a straight? I had to tell a little white lie. What do I have? Yeah. I have a straight. Told her I have a straight too. I know in her mind, I either have the six, the six nine, or the jack nine. I think most people watching on TV are gonna think, wow, you know, tough spot. If you didn't know what I had, what are you gonna think I have? It's very rare that I'm ever gonna bluff there. She ultimately folds the hand, and I don't show her because I don't wanna make her feel bad about it. We were having so much fun. I figured I'd tell her at the end of the show, but I don't even think she made a bad laydown, and I think if you ask a poll of 10 pros, don't tell them what I had, they're gonna say, you know what? Negreanu had you, good fold. Daniel's little white lie likely just got him taken off the lock Tilly Christmas card list, which is really <laughs> too bad because I heard this year they're giving everyone gift certificates to the Olive Garden. Well, Daniel definitely just gave Jen all she could eat. <laughs> Tilly straddles, action on Tony, a six. I think after that hand, Jennifer's moved on from white wine to scotch. Tony raises. I'm creating value. Nachos out. Queen eight for Hashem. In position. Calls on the button. Action on Ken, our loose cannon. 
Six five. No chance. <laughs> Daniel with King Jack. Daniel's not in position, but he's probably not folding to a Tony Reyes and a button call. Makes the call. Jennifer's got some money out there. How about this, gentlemen? And lady. We'll do, he doesn't have to straddle. Everyone else will straddle from here on out. Jen calls. Sound good? I'm not nope. that. Yeah? You want to do that? Jim doesn't like it. Flop, tray nine, queen. I go with company rule. Yeah. If everyone wants to straddle, I'll yeah. straddle. But you, you understand that makes it a bigger game. I am checking. For sure. Action checks around to Hashem with top pair. Both Joe and Jennifer flop top pair. Jennifer's out kicked. Joe bets 5K. Daniel's got a gut shot. And one over card to the board. And he hates folding. And he makes the call. Tilly out. And Tony G pitches it. Jen folds top pair, no kicker to a bet and a call. I like it. Good game, though. To the turn. Five of hearts. Daniel picks up a flush draw. Checks. Everyone's playing except one guy. Calling you out, Kenny. It is a little boring, but it's Ken's right to play how he wants. Not everyone's a millionaire. Yeah, well, yeah this is just count. Joe fires 10K. Don't let him get to you. You're playing good, Ken. Sure. Hashem still value betting, but Daniel just picked up oh so many outs. No way he folds. Daniel calls. Good call. I didn't I didn't call the river yet. I mean, it's a good call. Oh, in the turn it was a good call? Good call. I don't know, maybe. I sense sarcasm. River 10 of diamonds. Daniel hits his gutter ball. Very good call on the turn. Daniel checks. Joe wise enough to check behind. Wow. King Jack. Started, right? You have queen, right? I didn't see you. Also got a queen. Really? Decent amount of outs. Heart, king, 10, jack. Hey, well, not jack. Heart, hey, king, 10. Nice river. Daniel wins. Wow. And the Aussie continues running awful. So Daniel sucks out and ends up showing the best hand. He's done that 50% of the time at Showdown. Our leader in this category is Nacho Barbero with 78%. At the other end, Jennifer Tilly has only had the best hand at Showdown 25% of the time. That's only one in four. He said good call. I was like, oh, I, don't, I wasn't sure, but it was a decent price. It's getting like three to one. Joe so doesn't care. Tony G, 7-4 clubs. Out. There's 19 in there. It's three to one. Yeah, it was like 19,000. Not a bad process. Yep, doesn't care. Hashem folds. Rankowski with ducks. It's probably close. Don't talk pot odds around me. <laughs> that puts me on tilt. <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to make oh, me oh, feel oh, dumb. <laughs> Here he comes. Oh, Go get him, Jen. Found somebody who's blind he could steal. I'm going to call here. Get the copper. I'm going to get the copper. Wow. 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 <laughs> That's a copper yeah. siren noise. Jen calls Ken's raise. 310 jack, couple of spades. Uh, Huge yeah. flop for Jennifer. See at the river as far as she's concerned. And she checks. It it's a trap. Oh, I, I didn't think you were going to call the river. You're just going to raise me. Ken looking points. at continuing. Yeah, yeah. And does, no, bets 1,500. 5,000. Tilly instant raises to 5K. Jen knows Ken's image is super tight, but she's likely to have no problem getting all the money in on this flop. Right now, Ken's kicking himself, thinking, abort, abort. You're real meanie. <laughs> wow. I would fold if I were you. Ken folds. Eat some of and that. And I would have got there. Can oh we rabbit God. hunt? Yeah. Philly shows. I was hoping we could get it all in. Really rabbit awesome. hunt, rabbit hunt. Rabbit hunt. Yeah. Deuce, Ken would have hit his set. Oh, I wouldn't have got there. It's OK. You didn't need to get there. Jack was still good, right? Huh? Jack was still good? Jack is good. Ken checks the flop. He might have been able to double up. Oh, that's so brutal. Worst rabbit hunt ever. When we come back, see if the cannon shakes it off or tilts it off on the big game. Welcome back to the big game from Las Vegas, where we've been joined on set by our leading loose cannon, Maximiliano Martinez. Max finished with a profit of over 163,000. All he can do now is sweat the action and hope his number holds up as our final loose cannon, Ken Rankowski, tries to chase him down. If Ken's going to overtake Max for the NAPT passport, he'll have to add another 105,000 to his profit in the final 33 hands. Not an easy task, but Ken just needs to double up once to overtake the Italian. All right, everybody, we're going to put you in Ken's shoes because it's time to play Couch Cannon. That's where we test your medal by only showing you the loose cannons cards. It'll be up to you to make the right read and try to beat the pros. Bring it on. And while you're at it, bring it on again, too. Bring it on again, -er. Tony G straddled. Barbaro's out. Hashem folds. So far, so good. And Ken with Ace Queen. 
I'm noticing a pattern with these couch cannon hands. Raise. <laughs> He's on the button. Raise he does to 2,000. Daniel's out. Tilly folds. A couch cannon walk. <laughs> no, Tony's in. Just to see if I can get it all in as well. And you have quads. Tony's range is super wide, not too worried. I'll make it a big part though. Joe, I thought he was the protector of the cannons. Queen, Jack, 10, top pair for the cannon. Tony's first to act. Ooh. Bet's 5,000. This is a super easy call. Top pair, gut shot, backdoor diamonds. Tony fires constantly with all kinds of nonsense. Call. Call, 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 call. I know you're scared, Ken. Call. <laughs> Trust me. And Ken calls. Atta boy, Ken. To the turn. Deuce of hearts. All right, backdoor diamonds are out, so there goes one piece of the pie. Tony G fires 10K. But yes, Ken has to call again. We had too many reasons to call on the flop. Still plenty left now. He does. Wow. I like your hand. Do you want to swap hands? <laughs> I'm not scared till Tony bombs it. River, 10 of spades. There's your bomb, 35K. If there's one thing I've learned on the big game, it's that Daniel loves the call. But if I've learned two things, the second would be that Tony only bombs when he has it. I hope you don't have quads. <laughs> I guess you don't. <laughs> There's no straight flush out there. Now he's talking on top of it. Kenny's to fold like the wind, like the overnight crew at the Banana Republic. There goes all the profit. He should fold harder than someone who makes paper mache at a poster board. All right. Now, seriously, I know this is a big decision for Ken and that he's getting two to one, but I've honestly never been so sure about one of these couch cannon hands. Ken's playing with his own money now. Any call he makes comes out of his profit. I am trying to save Ken money here because I honestly cannot remember a time when Tony G bombed the river and he didn't have a monster. You have a good chance of winning the hand if you call. He was begging at that point. <laughs> that was begging, I wasn't sure. And then he begged at the river. So Ken folds. Let's see if he made the right decision. Tony G with Queen 10 full boat. You made a good lay down there, Ken. I had a full house. He sure did, Ken. You made the right decision. Sleep easy. Yeah, you begged at the river. When he was about to fold, Tony was like, ah, wait, wait, wait. Did you flop in straight? But too much. No, yeah, nice queen. Hashem calls it. You were beat all the way. Oh, you were beat all the way. Oh. What did you have, Tony? I had a full house. So on the last hand of the night, the loose cannon's profit takes a major hit, but he still ends up over 40 grand. He's got just one night left to bank more than 120K and overtake Max for the loose cannon title. Tony G adds to his table leading profit. Right on his heels is Nacho with over 77K, and Jennifer Tilly finishes down nearly 63,000. Into the night again. Are these pros starting to get to you yet? No, I think I'm getting to them, but... Uh, They're applying I, a lot of pressure. I tried, trying, I tried to get my money in there, but I think I pulled back at the right time. Yeah. Are we going to see you mix it up tomorrow night? I just might. Yeah. Maybe? <laughs> what do you think? You know what? I'm that gonna, that might just myself. be the crack in the door that we needed to get him okay. to just start to get the cobwebs off the chips. What can we expect from you tomorrow night? I'm, I'm ready to get it in. I'm ready to gamble. You keep saying that. And I did. I just, I, I bet it all against Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, you did. Huh? You did. I stuck it in. All right, we don't want to tell her what you had. No, not now. All right, that's it. I'm Amanda Leatherman saying goodbye for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. Good night. Another night of action in the books. For Stapes, this is Huff saying so long. Tomorrow night on The Big Game, with just one night left to overtake Max and capture the passport, the final loose cannon mounts a fourth quarter comeback. You making a move, Mr. Policeman? Can Ken pull off the upset, or will the fearless Italian keep his lead and be crowned the next loose cannon champion? And just stop ace no aces against Kings, please. Oh, gosh. Find out tomorrow night on the season two finale of The Big Game. I love this game. The preceding program was sponsored by PokerStars.com.